Let's look at an example of a two-dimensional collision problem. The diagram shows the top view of two balls colliding on a horizontal frictionless surface. Ball 1 has a mass of 0.2 kilograms, and ball 2 has a mass of 0.3 kilograms. Before the collision, the magnitude of the velocity of ball 1 is 0.8 meters per second, and the magnitude is 0.5 meters per second for the velocity of ball 2. After the collision, the magnitude of the velocity of ball 2 is 0.6 meters per second. What is the velocity of ball 1 after the collision? Okay, so what are we given? We're given the mass of each ball and the magnitude of the initial velocity for each ball, as well as their directions given by angles in the diagram. We also have the magnitude and direction of the final velocity of ball 2. We're looking for the final velocity of ball 1, a magnitude and a direction. We'll find the direction by finding the angle theta in the diagram. We're looking for two unknowns, so we need two equations. Can we use conservation of linear momentum? Only if the work done by non-conservative external forces is equal to zero. We're told that we're working with a frictionless surface, so friction doesn't do any work. The other external forces that would apply are the gravitational force from the weight of the balls and the normal force acting on the balls from the surface. These two forces balance each other out, so the net work done by external forces is equal to zero, and we can use conservation of total linear momentum. When we talked about applying the kinematic equations to two-dimensional problems, we talked about how we can treat the horizontal components of displacement, velocity, and acceleration separately from the vertical components. Since linear momentum is a vector quantity, we can also treat its horizontal and vertical components separately, so that total linear momentum in the x direction is conserved, and total linear momentum in the y direction is conserved. To find an equation for the magnitude of v1 final, let's take a close look at that vector. The velocity vector has an x component and a y component. We can find the magnitude of the v1 final vector by using the Pythagorean theorem once we know the magnitudes of v1x final and v1y final. And to find our other unknown, theta, we can use trigonometry. The tangent of theta equals the magnitude of v1y final over the magnitude of v1x final. Solving for theta gives us this equation. So these are our two equations for our two unknowns. For both of them, we need to find the magnitudes of v1x final and v1y final. First, to find these, we'll refer back to these equations for the conservation of total linear momentum in the x and y directions. The total final x component linear momentum is the final x component, x component linear momentum of ball 1 and the final x component linear momentum of ball 2. And the total initial x component linear momentum is the initial x component linear momentum of ball 1 and the initial x component linear momentum of ball 2. And it's the same for the y components of the total linear momentum. Since we're now working in two one-dimensional component directions, we can leave the vector arrows off and allow plus and minus signs to give us direction. The diagram shows the positive y direction to be up and the positive x direction to be to the right. Linear momentum is mass times velocity, so we can substitute these terms in for the linear momentum terms in both the x and y direction. We want v1x final and v1y final, so we'll solve these accordingly. We're given mass 1 and mass 2, but in order to find values for v1x final and v1y final, we need to find expressions for these other terms. As you can see, working this problem requires multiple steps, so let's organize this a bit. Here are the two final equations we hope to solve for our two unknowns.
and here are the equations that we need to solve in order to get the missing values to plug into our final equations. To solve these equations, we need to find the x and y components of the initial velocity vector of ball 1, the initial velocity vector of ball 2, and the final velocity vector of ball 2. So let's look at each of these individually, starting with v1 initial. We can draw the x and y components of this vector, and using trigonometry, we can now see that v1x initial equals the magnitude of v1 initial times the sine of 75 degrees. It's positive because it's pointing in the positive x direction. And v1y initial equals minus v1 initial times the cosine of 75 degrees. It's negative because the vector component is pointing in the minus y direction. Now let's look at v2 initial. We draw the x and y components of the vector. And we see now that v2x initial equals v2 initial times the sine of 70 degrees. And v2y initial equals v2 initial times the cosine of 70 degrees. Both of these vector components have positive values because they're both pointing in the positive directions. And lastly, we have the final velocity of ball 2. We start by drawing the x and y components of the vector, and we can see that v2x final is equal to v2 final times the sine of 85 degrees, and v2y final is equal to minus v2 final times the cosine of 85 degrees. We'll now substitute these expressions in for these terms here. Doing so, we get this expression for v1x final and this expression for v1y final. Now we'll plug in our mass and velocity values into these expressions to get values for these two terms. Using our calculator, we get these two values. We can now plug these values into our final equations. First, for v1 final. and we use our calculator to get a magnitude of 0.59 meters per second. And now we'll plug in values to find the value for theta, and using our calculator we get 13 degrees. So our complete answer for the final velocity of ball 1 is 0.59 meters per second, 13 degrees above right. As you can see, these problems can be quite involved, but just remember, if you can apply conservation of linear momentum in a two-dimensional collision problem, you can break the vectors down into their x and y components and deal with the different directions separately.